Yeah, and the and the the Catholic Church as both the force be- behind much of the world's um, colonization and and much of the world's um, gendered violence. You know, the Catholic Church has been at the center of of so much violence against indigenous peoples all over the world. And just to hear what you said about how they refused to, to um, acknowledge, you know, that this happened and they refused to take responsibility for it is just, you know, my family you know, I have a lot of family who's Catholic or who pretend to be Catholic. And I was raised Catholic because everybody in the Pueblos is raised Catholic. And um, I left abandoned, rejected when I was very young. Um, and I look at it and, I, and it, it almost blows my mind that people still adhere to to that church still believe in that church when literally they have single-handedly committed genocide um against our people for years generations you know when 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 Connie Walker was talking about Columbus well who was Columbus sailing for Spain. Why was why was Spain seeking to colonize? Because they had just um, basically reclaimed their country from the Moors, from the the um, North Africans, from from Muslims, and they wanted to um, Catholicize literally the entire world. That was their that was their their goal. Aside from becoming incredibly wealthy from stealing everybody's land. So from 1492, when sex trafficking of native women literally began um, in this hemisphere and um, to the Catholic boarding schools, to, um, to, to MMIW, it's, it's always been about settler colonialism about which is driven by the church. The church drives um, government, and and it's these governments that that you know manifest destiny was a divine mandate, right? Or supposedly manifest destiny was a divine mandate. And we were talking earlier about how the Pope supposedly um, repudiated the doctrine of discovery. Um, but he really didn't. And he really like, you have to name those, those papal bulls and you have to call them out and you have to say, this was literally an evil document that was passed by the Catholic church. And we reject it. We should have rejected it, you know, years ago. It, it, and he didn't really do that. He just kind of circled around the back, peeked in the back door and said, yeah, you're right. It was a bad idea. None of this ever came with any kind of of uh, um, remuneration or 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 any um, harm reduction. Like none of this ever came with anything substantive. No apology has ever um, come close to to reducing the amount of harm done by the Catholic Church and the fact that. Nobody ever took responsibility. I mean, these are horrific. I've read some of the some of the transcripts of children and and I didn't listen to this podcast, but I just I can't even do it. It is so disturbing and and so just you wonder as you're walking and living in this world how human beings can be so awful. And 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 this church managed to grab every single one of them and put a collar on them or a dress or something and say, yeah, go do this all to native kids. Here, here's your carte blanche. Go do it. Anyway, 
I, nobody it should ever be in any doubt about how I feel about the Catholic church. And, um, you know, when I, when I talk about burning it all down again, just want to say, Sina, not talking about burning churches. I'm talking about burning down settler colonialism. Well, I forgot what year it was. It must've been maybe in the early two thousands, someone did burn St. Michael's to the ground. Um, you know, Connie Walker talks about this a couple of times. Um, and like, you know, in her, in her interviews with, uh, she just recalls, she has memories of her dad, for example, how he would have these PTSD flashbacks that she later understood to be related to the physical structure of the school, um, the stairs leading up to the entrance, the windows of the school. Um, and I believe she, it's either one of her aunts or her uncle also talks about um, the sounds of that building. So the physical, um, the actual edifice, right? The physical building itself um, would trigger really horrific nightmares, really horrific um, episodes for survivors of the school. So burning it down was like an incredibly important, <laughs> you know, moment in just getting rid of the visual representation of complete terror and complete horror um, for this literally an entire generation and more than one generation. St. Michael's didn't even close until 1996. Like, I mean, that was really recent. That was like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you know? And so, and a lot of residential and boarding schools closed down maybe in the sixties, but you know, in the United States, some of them were still running into the seventies and the eighties. Um, and then obviously the, the residential schools in Canada into the nineties. And so, um, what I'm saying is that like burning down an actual school, you know, everyone talk about church burning, which is a venerated tradition of my, my clan, by the way, <laughs> that's part of where that history comes from. Um, the burning actually of a Catholic church in a Pueblo, um, because of the violence of conquest that we're describing here. Um, the permission, like what you said, Elena, about uh, how can people do this to each other? How could you like, how could you possibly do this to a child, like a three year old child or like a five year old child? And the incredible like permission that the structure and the system of colonialism and conquest gives you to do this. And whether it's, you know, you're lying to yourself that you're saying it's in the name of religion, all that doesn't come from religion. That comes from the mentality that these people are, these are animals, right? These are animals that must be submissive and that you have to either beat or kill, right? In order to get the, the, the end goal is either to convert them for the rest of their lives. And if you can't convert them, then you just get rid of them. And that really is what describes colonialism uh, you know, the Catholic Church is a protagonist in North America, well, in the entire Western Hemisphere of conquest and what I just described. And <sighs> apologies don't matter. I know we're like in the neoliberal era of apologia, right? And like this, this idea that like recognition, um, a recognition of the harm or kind of like a recognition of the trauma and then an apology for the trauma. Uh, it's like, oh, we're going to close this this dark chapter. Don't, aren't they always saying this is like dark chapter in our national history? And it's like, okay, but the reason why people are still making documentaries about MMIWG in Montana, like there was a new one that came out on Showtime this year, just like two or three months ago, is because colonialism isn't like, conquest isn't a thing that just happened in the past. It's a structure, right? Which I feel like is a normal, like most people understand that this is true in this day and age, but the impulse to apologize and then to be like, oh, that's the form of justice that we need. And then to move forward, obviously misses the point that the mentality that native people, particularly children and women who are seen as more vulnerable by that predatory system that underwrites conquest are still subjected to the logic of the doctrine of discovery, which is a logic that sees native people as animals and that whether or not we're trying to live our best lives, living out in public, going to a bar, like any normal person to have a drink 
or like trying to raise our kids or engaging in like resistance, like being a water protector, for example, or being a feminist or those kinds of things that obviously were seen as a threat, um, were seen as out of control, were seen as out of place. And there are just a litany of mechanisms of control and discipline and torture, really, in the arsenal of conquest that are still very much unleashed on Native people every day. And today we're just talking about them in the form of MMIWG, right? That's how, that's the language we use today to talk about it. But the fact that that 84% of Native women experience, was it violence? 